Hey everyone, it is Stephanie here with Infernal TV, and I am doing a special Woman's Day episode with Malika of Abnormality. So how are you? I'm good. How are you doing? All right. Well, then, since uh, this is a special Woman's Day interview, I'm just going to just ask a few questions about um, women in metal and then how we can make uh, the metal industry a better place for women to be involved in. So, um... Well, I mean, I guess, like, in your opinion, do you think the extreme metal community is a good place for women, or, uh, or you know, maybe are there any issues? Like, what do you think? I think there are a lot of problems in the metal scene, and it's very often not a friendly place for women. I found a great, like, community of other women, and... Um, you know, we can stand up with each other and, and you know, share our experiences and, you know, stick up for each other when, you know, when we're being harassed and things, and, and that's been really great. But there <laughs> are a lot of men with big ideas about women in the metal scene, unfortunately, and it's, yeah. it feels like decades behind the rest of the world somehow, yeah. like the metal scene is stuck behind in this this old mentality that, you know, women don't belong in, in in the same places as men, unfortunately. Mm. But there are a lot of, you know, great men in the metal scene, too, who aren't part of that. So it's not everybody. It's just, unfortunately, a lot of guys. I feel you. So how do you think that um, how we can make uh, the extreme metal community a more, like, supportive place for women to, you know, whether just be fans, come out to shows, or play music, or what do you think? I think it's, um, you know, it's awesome, you know, when men can be allies to women and when they see guys disrespecting women to, like, say something to mm -hmm. those guys, make them feel bad, like, uncool yeah. if they're doing that kind of stuff. And, you know, I love when I see sisterhood in the metal scene and women, you know, joining forces together, you know, reaching out in friendship with each other. And, and I think that's great, the sister sisterhood community and the metal scene is, you know, part of what's going to help. And, you know, because I think when you come across, you know, sexism or, you know, douchebag guys, <laughs> a lot of women just, they, they just get out of the metal scene because they, they don't want to be around that. And it's totally understandable. Yeah. So, like, if we want to see more women in the metal scene, like, we should band together and, you know, make us, you know, make it a nice place for for us to be there, you know, to encourage women to, to um, be a part of this metal scene. Awesome. It, it can really be, it can really be mm -hmm. like a boys club. It can feel like a boys club when it's like, you know, 80% of men at the show or like 99% of the musicians on stage are men. Yeah. It like feels like a boys club. And um, so like just getting more women in there is what I think is going to change it. You know, when we see representation on the stage, when we see representation in the audience, we're going to feel like we belong there. And, like, unfortunately, there's a lot of um, gatekeepers <laughs> like, yeah. making women feel uncomfortable. So, like, we need, you know, men and women making those gatekeepers feel old, like, uncool and mm -hmm. outdated. Sweet. And I totally agree with all that. And I remember you and I had this conversation a little while ago, getting rid of the female-fronted uh, label that um, that a lot of uh, women get, you know, for publicity or, like, female guitarists, all-female band. Like, do you believe that we should get rid of that and just kind of focus on women playing music or women being involved in the industry, or what do you think? Um, like, I don't have a problem with... Um fans being excited about women in the metal scene and wanting to support women, I think that's a good thing. I have a problem with, like, the way the media covers women in metal as a gimmick, as, like, eye candy, and they're selling those headlines, like, mm -hmm. with, like, female fronted metal, or, like, sexy female, <laughs> hottest women in metal, you know? They're treating women as an other and not as an equal right. person on the scene the stage and I think that's what really needs to change the way that the media covers women in metal and um and focusing on looks instead of talents so like and I wish 
that in the future we'll focus more on the music that the women are creating and the, and the talent that they're bringing to the scene. Awesome, and I totally agree with all of that. Um, now let's go into talking about abnormality. So I know because I was just on, you know, scrolling around your Facebook page uh, when I was um, preparing for this interview, and it looks like you all have a new album and you're about to record. So I guess just tell me a little bit more about what abnormality fans can expect from the new album. Well, uh, we have all the songs written now, and we're super excited, and we can't wait to record them, and we can't wait to, to release the next album. We'll put out some more information as soon as we can. But uh, yeah, we're entering the studio soon, and I'm actually going to record my vocals over here. Um, but yeah, <laughs> what else about it? <laughs> Sweet! All right. Well, I'm stoked for the new album, and then... What else do you have going on for the rest of this year? Like, do you have any touring planned, or maybe next year? Do you think you'll have any touring, or what do you think? Yeah, I can't give away any too much information yet. We'll release all the information in due time, but we are booking tours right now, and um, we are recording soon, and the album should be out this year. Fingers crossed, and Sweet. we'll definitely be cool. We'll definitely be touring in support of the album, so. All right, well, I guess, how has life in Prague been? You and your husband have been living here for a little while, right? Like a couple years now? Yeah, yeah, uh, my husband's lived here for over 10 years, um, but I have been living here for two years now. Sweet, do you like uh, this country better than America? <laughs> I wouldn't say better. I, I miss America in a lot of ways. Um, I miss my family and my friends, and there's a lot of really great things about America, including death metal bands. <laughs> nice. <laughs> but I, there, there's great things over here, too, and it's a beautiful country, and it's a really like calm way of life. And, um, I moved here, you know, for, for love and mm -hmm. adventure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> good, but I go back and forth quite a bit, so, oh, nice. um, so I don't miss America too much. I visit enough. <laughs> awesome. And now, well, you do want to promote your vocal lessons, because I just took a lesson, and she definitely helped improve my growls. So I guess, what can you promote with your vocal lessons? Like, I know you told me about your, like, vocal background, but I guess, like, I guess give, like, your professional singing background and kind of, like, how you tie that in with, um, with growls. Yeah, I just, uh, I remember, like, over, gosh, when was it? Yeah. over 15 years ago, anyway, when I started growling, I was looking up, you know, different resources, and, like, I watched the Xana streaming DVD and whatever, but I, I noticed there wasn't a lot of information about growling. Now there's more you can find on, online and stuff, but uh, there's not really many growling teachers out there, per se, um, so I'm happy to be, be a resource for anybody interested in improving their vocals at any level, and uh, I found uh, a lot of inspiration from opera singing, and I took lessons with an opera singer, and so I, I know some of those techniques, and the breathing techniques, and I'm happy to share that with some students. Um, and, you know, all my experience with, with Abnormality um, and my other bands. Um, and, yeah, I, I, I'm excited to, to share what I've learned with, with any prospective students. And I really want more women in bands, as, as we were talking about. Um, so I encourage any ladies out there interested in growling to get in touch with me because we need to take over the scene. <laughs> do it. I think just for the Pact of Sisterhood, we should do some pretty brutal growls. So you start. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> what do you want me to growl? What do you want me to say? Just whatever. Here, let's do like the tongue thing, the back of the throat tongue thing that you taught me. Okay, ready? <laughs> yes. One, two, three, together, right? Oh, together. One, two, three. <laughs> All right, so then, I guess, uh, what do you have to say to the sexist assholes? Like, the guys who are like, yeah, no, girls should listen to metal, bit. Like, what do you say to those guys? Uh, 
two words. Fuck off. <laughs> All right, and then this is the last question. Just say what you want. You can promote something. You could just say hi to the fans. Just whatever you want. Uh, yeah. Hi to all the fans. Anybody listening? Thank you so much for the support. It means a lot. And I want to give a shout out to all the brutal ladies out there killing it in the metal yeah. scene. A lot of whom I can I'm blessed to call friends. Um, keep killing it. Keep showing the dudes what's up. <laughs> what up? All right, everyone. Thank you so much for listening. And like Malika said, um, definitely a lot going on with Abnormality, new album, hopefully some touring coming up. And then, yeah, if you want to, you know, have some more brutal growls and definitely contact her for some vocal lessons because she's definitely knowledgeable and they help a lot. They've helped me already. And then, yeah, just, I guess... Don't be a misogynist asshole in the scene because there's a bunch of awesome women and we love metal and it'll be cool if you didn't treat us like shit. <laughs> Alright, thanks for listening everybody. Stay metal. Stay metal.